Books and movies have always gone hand in hand. Whether a book is adapted to a movie or the other way around, it is not uncommon to see the same story in different mediums. And there's more movies that fall in this category that you might think, apart from the obvious teen series like Twilight and The Maze Runner. Some of the most praised movies are actually based on novels. Films like The Shawshank Redemption, The Godfather, Fight Club, Schindler's List, the list truly goes on and on. But perhaps one of the more obvious and more well-known adaptations in recent years is the Hunger Games series. So welcome back to Forgotten Popcorn, I'm Will, and today we're going to be talking about the Hunger Games series, which I've just recently finished reading, so let's talk about the differences in the two. I volunteer as tribute! So Katniss, who's really good with a bow, goes, I volunteer as tribute to save her sister, and participates in a death match with 23 other people. She pretends to fall in love, just to end up really falling in love and getting some action in a cave, and then winning these games with her fake but real boyfriend. The Capitol, but more specifically this guy named President Snow, really hates her for some reason and arranges the next series of Hunger Games to make sure that she gets back into the arena. She gets a lightning arrow and shoots it at the dome and then BOOM! Everything explodes and she gets saved by rebels. Without knowing it, she's been the face of a revolution and she now has to film some really good propaganda videos. But all she wants to do is kill Snow, so she plays along until they finally storm the Capitol. But then her sister goes boom, so like there really wasn't a point in saving her in the first place. The rebels end up winning the war and she finally gets her chance to shoot the snow guy, but she misses for the first time in the whole movie and kills the other b We have Jennifer Lawrence at the start of her now amazing career. Prior to this, she had main roles in 2010's Winter Bone, and then she also played Mystique in the 2011 X-Men reboot First Class. In the same year that the Hunger Games movie came out, she also won her first Oscar for the movie Silver Linings Playbook. She is by far the standout actor in the whole series. Other than Jennifer Lawrence, we also have some pretty good performances from Woody Harrelson, Elizabeth Banks, Stanley Tucci, and Donald Sutherland. Personally, I wasn't a fan of Josh Hutcherson's performance, but I don't think it's that much of a bold statement that I really need to expand on that. Another reason why they are so loved by the audience is because the movie stayed loyal to the source material. Having Suzanne Collins, the author of the original series, help with the screenplay of the first movie made sure that the story really stayed true to what she wrote. Although she isn't credited with the screenplay in the following three movies, she is still an executive producer on them and helped guide the story. There are some minor changes between the two mediums, but they're really just to help portray the narrative on screen and because you can put so much more detail in the books. Well, the editing and the cinematography in the 2012 movie is simply nauseating. The shaky cam and the constant jump cuts makes it a really hard watch. The director of the first movie, Gary Ross, said, It's a very urgent first-person narrative. I tried to put you in Katniss's shoes the same way Suzanne Collins put you in Katniss's shoes. I wanted to take you through the world using this kind of serpentine tunnel vision that Katniss has. But this way of filming clearly didn't sit well with some of the studio higher-ups. Similarly to another series, like Twilight, who received a lot of backlash, they decided to change the entire crew from for the cinematographers and editors for the remainder of the series. Following this change, they kept up the same quality of storytelling and stayed with a more consistent style of filmmaking for the rest of the series. Yes, the story is probably at its best during this first movie, although Catching Fire is a pretty good sequel and the best in this series in my opinion. The filmmaking in the first one is just so nauseating and really hard to watch that it makes it the worst from a filmmaking aspect. Thank you guys for watching this video, hopefully you enjoyed it. Let us know down in the comments which one is your favorite movie in this series and what you think of it as a whole. Remember to like and subscribe if you're new, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.